This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is your one-stop shop to build your online presence and create a beautiful online presence. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be discussing something leaving my garage because sadly, it is nearly time for me to say goodbye to something. However, there are new additions coming. So, let's jump in the Defender. And I may well get onto why we're jumping in the Defender very shortly. We'll go for a little drive and I'm going to discuss it. Before I get in, actually, I was just about to get in and start rambling. However, I've actually had some work done to this and this is probably a separate video. However, for whatever reason, I haven't bothered. So I've actually got some security work done to the Defender. I'm just gonna quickly gloss over it before we get into the main meat of the video. So many people will know the alarm is actually behind the light. That has now been relocated into the bonnet somewhere. I've had the bonnet changed, so the latch now under there has been pushed back, so you can't actually get to the bonnet, because a lot of defenders, um, people either disabling the alarm behind there or something like that, and then they were going in, undoing the bonnet, nicking stuff, and just causing carnage, basically, and doing whatever they wanted, because the alarm's disabled. So I've not really explained that very well, however, Alarm's been moved, latch has been moved, and you see under here, in these vents, well you probably can't see it because it's dark and I'm filming at silly o'clock again. Underneath here, essentially, you used to be able to lift that, find the bonnet cable, and then lift that or just get in under there. No more. There's a plate under there, bolted in from the other side. And same again on this side. You can just about see it in there if my camera decides to focus. Yeah, as you can see, there's now a plate under there. Again, same thing. You can take that plastic grill off, but you can't get in there. Coming around then, all of the bolts around the car have been replaced with kind of safety bolts. And on the doors here, because people are getting their doors stripped off, I've got these things as well. You see this little yellow thingy here? Meaning that if the door shut, that locks into the bulkhead and you can't actually open the door anymore, which is all kind of simple things, but just little simple things. I just kind of, you know, want to keep this Defender as secure as possible. It does always have a disc lock on it. It's got a tracker on it as well, so it's all very secure. Anyway, and there's some other bits and bobs which I'm not telling anyone about. Anyway, let's get in. Are we going to fire up? Oh, we've got this on here as well. That's some sort of immobilizer jazz. But yeah, this is inside the Defender. So let's get on with the video, finally, I promise. Chaos. She's fired up. Let's get on the move. Don't know what happened there. All right, let us set off then. We're on the move in the Defender. Lights on, that always helps. Right, garage update then. You love a garage update because, as you, many of you know, I am uh, churning cars uh, here, there, and everywhere. And it's quite useful. Oh my God, I just had an accident. Not a good start. Garage update, garage update, garage update. So where did we get up to on the last one? Let's start with some positive news then. Range Rover. Many of you will know that I'm getting a Range Rover. Well, that was the plan anyway. Uh, I ordered that in the summer and that was due to arrive kind of November, December time. We are now at the end of January, possibly February by the time this video goes out. Probably the 1st of February or maybe 31st of Jan. There is no sign of the Range Rover. That has appeared on my Instagram stories uh, today. I put it up the 30th of January. Um, kind of explaining what on earth has gone on with the Range Rover because there's been a debacle with that. Um, essentially, JLR have just been useless. Um, I don't want to sound like a bratty customer. Where's my Range Rover? Um, but I rang up today and I was essentially told because they were doing about 300 cars a month, uh, they had no idea where my car was. Uh, which I'm, you know, I am pleased for them, but I just kind of want to know where my car is. So. Um, and, and again, not in a bratty way, there is some brand work tied up with the Range Rover, there's some bits and bobs tied up with the Range Rover. I need to actually know when it's coming uh, to kind of schedule it all in. And, and besides all that, you know, it's, it's an expensive car, kind of, you pay your money, you're a customer, you, you kind of, you, you should kind of know where the car is. And these things aren't invisible, there are systems. So I was a little bit perplexed by all of that. Anywho, it's not life and death, it's just a car. Um, so I guess that'll just turn up when it turns up, or I'll just get a call and I'll go and get it. I think it is at the dealer. Uh, but they can't find it. They said there's one bloke that basically signs all the cars into their compound 
Um, and because there's so many cars, he kind of struggles to cope with it all and they don't really know where it is. Uh, they seem to think it might be with them now and going through PDI, but they weren't quite sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, ha how they're running a business like that, answers on a postcard. Anywho, that's the Range Rover. So we're probably about a week or so out. God only knows with that. Um, but rest assured there will be a collection video with that car coming very, very soon. And so those eagle eye viewers that have probably spotted hair all over me. Um, I was having a little uh, bit of sofa time with crisps about half an hour ago, so I do apologize for possibly the state of me there. Range Rover news over and done with then. What else is coming? The SV replacement has been locked and loaded. Um, as I put on my Instagram today as well. Busy day on Instagram today. The SV replacement has been decided. I found a car. I am currently going through the kind of the paperwork and stuff on it. As with most cars, they kind of need inspecting um, and cars of a certain value, they need kind of uh, valuing as well. Um, so there's still some hurdles to jump through on the SV replacement, but I found a car and, you know, fingers crossed it's all okay. The guesses have been flooding in. We've had guesses ranging from a Nissan Micra, 2002 Nissan Micra specifically, uh, to SLS Black Series, to Enzos, to F50s, F40s, Carrera GT, uh, you name it, LFA, loads of stuff coming in. So I can assure you it's on a kind of another level. Not to any of those cars, it's going to be at that sort of level, uh, but it's definitely on the another level to the SV. So that's all very exciting. And please keep everything crossed. That all kind of uh, goes according to plan. Anyone's bought a big old car like this before knows that there's loads of steps and it's all a bit of admin, especially as I'm not cash buying and there will be finance as well. So that's going to be, um, you know, administrative pig's ear as well. So. There we go, that is SV replacement news. So do stay tuned to the channel for that. That should be about maybe a week, two weeks or so away before I can give you anything concrete on that. And of course I will probably say, oh, 992, I actually don't like them. That will be probably a surprise. I'll probably drop it as a surprise. The first you'll see of it will probably be in the thumbnail. I'll just drop it like that at some point. So fingers crossed for me anyway. And if this one doesn't work out, then I'll continue my hunt. Now then, the meat on the bones, the reason you're watching this video, and it's a bit of an anti-climax possibly, um, because some of you aren't all for this car. I now know that I'll be getting rid of a car in March, at the very least. Um, this one's definite as well. And I know I've mentioned my 458 Spider before in terms of getting rid of that. I'm still up in the air about that 458 Spider. I still don't see the need for it, but I still love it, so I don't know. Anyway, a load of you have messaged me about the 458. Do keep the messages coming. It's, it's good to have options when, when I do come to get rid of it. Uh, but it's you know 6,000 miles, perfect spec, absolute minter, um, Ferrari warranty from Ferrari main dealer. It's perfect. It's everything you want from a 458 Spider. So I don't really want to get rid, however it might go. So who, who knows at this point on that? So the car that I'm definitely getting rid of, is the BMW i3 S that is going in March. Um, many of you will be aware that's a partnership with Vines BMW. So that car has been a kind of part of my daily life for the past year or so. I've absolutely loved it. And as I say, March is quite a while away, so I might do some content with that. Um, showing everyone how fast it is, but it's quite hard around town to show people how quick it is without driving like a tit in, uh, in built up areas. So I kind of don't really want to do that, but I can assure you it is very, very fast and in terms of a daily car in the city, I couldn't ask for anything more. I absolutely love that car. And there will be a car coming from Vines again. There'll be something else coming from Vines and I'm gonna mix it up this time. So stay tuned for that. Big shout out to Vines at this point. Absolute pleasure to work with them. They've got a huge site in Red Hill. And so yeah, I will be doing some stuff with them very soon and collecting a new car from them in March. But that's not the news. The news is that the i3S is going and yeah, my first kind of foray into electric vehicles and I love it and I think it's kind of reassured me that electric vehicles are fantastic and they are definitely the future. Charging points wise, I think we're getting there. I don't think we're there yet. And in terms of uh, battery anxiety and things like that, if you have a set routine every day and you know where you're going, you know where your charging points are and you know where the range is, phenomenal. Loads of little short journeys, phenomenal, great, fantastic. Um, but every now and again, I've gone to use it on a long journey. Like I, I tried to go to Cotswolds the other day and I realized it wouldn't get there and back on one charge. And I was kind of like, I don't really have time to kind of just be sitting around. So supercharging is being rolled out all over the place and it's gonna become less of a thing, the whole charging thing. So electric vehicles are not a no from me. I did receive a little bit of abuse from people saying, ah, oh, it's an electric car, it's not a petrol head car. It's not a manual, naturally aspirated 
four MPG car. No, it's not, um, but that's actually phenomenal for getting to my job in the city, so I quite liked it. Uh, anywho, so it's going. If you've got any burning questions about the i3s, by all means DM me on Instagram, leave comments below and I will probably put out some content if it's not Instagram stories, um, but also YouTube stuff answering those questions. I want to field everything on that because it's caused a lot of curiosity as well. But a lot of guys that just want, you know, a run around day to day, they've got a kind of weekend toy and they just want sort of a, a tool to get around in. Um, so yeah, do fire your questions at me. In terms of anything else going, 912, 912, don't know how to say it, but that is in restoration still. The chap at Revival Cars, um, he's not been very well, so there's been a delay on that car. It was originally scheduled to be about a three week job, but he's been really, really under the weather, and I've just told him, look mate, just get back on your feet, don't worry about the car, it's only a piece of metal, so just do that in your own time, take as long as you want. If you're happy with the car there, I'm happy with the car there, so just do it whenever. Um, it now has new floor pans in it, anyway. He's back on his feet, he's back working. Um, it has got new floor pans in it. The front end still needs doing in terms of correcting some of the rust and uh, some of the filler and, and bodge work that's gone on over the years. But the 912 is coming back. It's not a, uh, a lost cause. I haven't given up on it, and it will be returning to the channel um, just in time for summer. To be honest with you, I wouldn't be taking it out in the winter anyway, really. Um, so yeah, it's it's coming. It is coming. And the 996 as well, by the time this video goes out, I don't think the 996 will be back yet on the channel. That is with RPM Technic, as many of you will have seen. That is getting new adjustable suspension all the way around, a slight 10 mil drop, and is also getting a new ink and exhaust system from Klein and new uh, Sport Port Technic tips. I don't actually know what they're called. Porsche equipment, whatever it is, um, the split tips, which look really, really cool. It's getting full detail inside and out, and a little bit of restoration, a little bit of pampering, another little service, although it only had one last year. So yes, the 996 is coming back as well. In terms of anything else leaving the channel, there isn't. The Pista is staying, the F12 staying, the Aston Martin AMR is staying, and that is finally booked in actually with Bamford Rose. That's going in uh, in February to get light and flywheel, double clutch, um, something to do with the exhaust and headers basically and something to do with the suspension as well I'll go into a full list of mods with them though and that's gonna be a really exciting series that car's gonna be absolutely transformed Bamford Rose do a lot of the racing cars the GT3 stuff and all sorts of jazz there so I might have got that wrong but they do loads of cool stuff and they're really really in bed with Aston and they do proper proper work this isn't some sort of chav workshop really spot on stuff with Bamford Rose so I'm very very excited for that and I'm gonna go into full details on that very soon so the Aston's staying as well What's wrong with me? I'm keeping cars. Um, I think I finally settled on a bunch of cars that I actually love. So yeah, it's quite nice actually. I can kind of just keep them, not stress. The F12 hasn't lost any money. Pista hasn't lost any money. The Vantage AMR hasn't lost any money. In fact, they are now above some of the new Vantages, which is very, very chaotic. Not that chaotic if you, if you have a new Vantage, but they're holding value extremely well. The late, V8 and V12 manual Vantages with all the kind of facelift bits on them, they are holding value extraordinarily well. And as I say, they're now more valuable than some of the new ones, which is chaos. And that's where I expect them to sit. They're phenomenal cars and they're kind of last to a, last to a breed really. So um, yeah, shout out, to, shout out to Aston for a very cool car and something that I plan on holding on to quite a long time. What else is in the garage? The car we're in right now, this Defender is gonna be sticking around for a while. I actually had a comment earlier saying it was my favorite car in the garage. I think that's probably a little bit strong, but the Defender's staying around as well. So very exciting stuff. This is just gonna knock around in my garage until I don't know when really, until I drop dead or it drops dead. I don't really plan on getting rid of it. It's gone up in value. There's a nice bit of equity in it. Um, I might refire, get some equity out and spend it on something nice, but no real need to get rid of it. What else is in the garage? What other cars do I have? I think that's it. I think I covered a lot there. Any other business then, uh, Modball UK is back obviously at the beginning of May, there's only a few places left on that and I'll be driving the SV replacement on that rally. So if you want to get involved in that, I'll leave the link uh, below somewhere to sign up for Modball UK. We've had about five or six uh, sign ups in the past day, so there's kind of been a little surge, I don't know what's going on, uh, but we're limiting the places on that, so do get involved in that if you want to get in the pot and drive and party 
and cause chaos and do some networking as well. Really, really cool event. And if you're a brand looking to get your sponsor across every single car, all over the banners, all over the mail blast, all over my social media, all over the mobile social media as well, all in one hit, there are sponsorship packages available as well. I think we're going to be deciding the sponsors very, very soon. So just put your name in the hat, drop an email. I'll leave that below. I'll have a look through. I think that's it. Is that it? I'm losing the plot, there's no one there. I think that's it. Actually, one more thing to say. Home and dry then, as I touched on in previous videos then, Squarespace is your perfect place to set up your online business and that resonates very heavily with me. As you all know, I set up a new company very, very recently. There's a number of cool features with Squarespace that I wanna run through and they're very, very easy to set up on your very own website. The first of which being being able to schedule posts. As you all know, and I bang on about, I'm very, very busy. So it's actually very useful that you can schedule content in advance and you can get posts to go out as and when and kind of new content on the site and you can schedule that in advance. Second thing, is subscriptions. You can very easily sell subscriptions on your site, which is very cool and generating actually value for your business long term. Because if a potential buyer of your business comes along, you've got loads of subs, very, very good, and they're all paying you monthly, recurring revenue, lovely stuff. So subscriptions another thing, really, really cool. Another thing also is analytics as well. You can analyze analytics with Squarespace very, very easily. You can see how long people are on the site for, uh, where they click, bounce rate, all this kind of stuff to help you hone your website, make more money, and keep people on there longer and whatever it is you want to do with your website all the analytics are there available for you to analyze another very cool feature as well is being able to finally tune and create email campaigns from templates squarespace have them all available there as part of your website so you can pick and choose and develop really nice email campaigns and as many of you will know in e-commerce email campaigns are really really key so that's a very nice feature as well and it works very very well all then left for me to say then is thank you very much for watching. Make sure you head to Squarespace right now to get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can get 10% off. The link is below, the code is below. Go and get involved before the offer ends. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye now.